All right, so we have our beautiful guy here. Let's see what this sounds like. That's it. When you think of Chicago, you might think of Italian beef, Chicago hot dogs, or you know, pizza in many forms. But what some out-of-towners don't know that many locals do know is how delicious the Polish sausage is. Yes, it's sausage, not sausage, not sausage, sausage. To help us explore this humble tubular sandwich, I have summoned the likes of a man who knows sausage like very few people do. Put it together for the return of Joe Yim. Joe, oh, come on out. It's great to have you back, Joe. You son of a So you have a lot of experience with the Polish sausage. You make mm -hmm. your own, you've grown up eating them. You went to college near where we're going yeah, right now. Like literally right on campus. Yeah. So uh, why don't you say we teleport to get some first-hand knowledge from the source at yeah. Jim's OG, the place that started it all. The story of the Polish sausage in Chicago dates back over a hundred years. Picture it, Chicago, early 1900s. This was a time where the only place in the world housing more Polish people was Warsaw, the capital of Poland, literally. These people introduced the city to their culture and of course their food, including the kielbasa, which would later become known as the Polish sausage or the Polish for short. And you can't talk about the Polish sausage without mentioning Maxwell Street, the bustling market district in Chicago known for its mix of vendors, musicians, and diverse immigrant communities. It's still around, it's just not really what it used to be. It's Maxwell Street where the kielbasa was transformed into what we now call the Polish sausage, a portable sandwich that features a bun, mustard, onions, and hot pickled peppers. And there's no better place to get a Polish sandwich sausage then from Jim's original. Jim's Grandpa Jim opened this spot back in 1939, and though the business has moved around a bit, it's not on Maxwell Street anymore, the food and general vibe is much the same. You know, you walk up to the window, you order your food, you take it to the metal counter on the side of the building, or crush it in your car. Huge shout out to Jim and his team for showing us around, teaching us a little bit more about the history and the makeup of the Polish sausage in Chicago. He's a third generation owner, his grandpa started the place, he's the boss man and quality control expert. This is Betty. If you've eaten a Polish sausage from Jim's at any point over the past two decades, you have her to thank. She's a beast. Jim was nice enough to take us into the kitchen during service to show us how they throw down. But doing so as I stared into the mountain of onions, it sort of hit me. The Polish sausage is the epitome of an all-American story. You know, think about it. A Greek man opens up a business selling Polish food to dozens of different ethnic groups in an American city. It's a beautiful thing, you know? Now, let's head back to the crib and see if we can make one ourselves. Nice and grab. <laughs> well, that was insightful. Yeah, that was awesome, man. All right, so with that out the way, it's time to finally make our Polish sausage sandwich at the crib. And every good sausage needs good meats. All right, here we have a beautiful, this is actually American Wagyu chuck roast, right, from the shoulder of the mm. animal. Very fatty, as you can see, a bunch of different muscles in there. Yeah, look at the marbling in that side, right? Yeah, whoa. Marbling right there. Hot diggity shdang. And then of course, we got our pork butt. Nice bone in big old butt right here. Look at all that fat. We might have to remove some of that, but that is an ideal butt. I mean shoulder. It's a butt. Butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, butt. <laughs> we learned at gyms that a Polish sausage is pork and beef. Mm -hmm. I mean, you tell me, like beef sausage, when it's done well, it's good. When it's not, it's not. What's, yeah, I what's think going on um, just from cooking from experience and making different sausages, an all beef sausage, when it's good, like you said, it's great, but it has a tendency to not hold together as well as an all pork sausage, but that's why having a little bit of mix of both. It's just kind of that great blend of like flavors of that beef and pork, but having a lot of that muscle from that pork and that pork fat to really bind everything together. So the pork is, is doing the most work here. Yeah. It's the most important probably part for sausage. And it's easier to make good sausage with pork than beef. Definitely. But we still want that beefy flavor in the yeah. sausage, right? But what's the percentages we're going for? Yeah, here? so overall in terms of the ratio between meat to fat, what you're looking for is somewhere around 70 to 75% meat and the other side being fat, which is why a lot of people use pork butts for uh, sausage because you can in. already see uh, all that fat. I think that's also the reason why an all beef sausage, uh, you kind of have to put an extra fat in there because most muscles aren't as marbled as that cut of beef that we have right here. But it is definitely possible to overdo the fat. Definitely, what for sure. If you, overdo yeah. the fat? if you overdo it, you'll when you by the time the sausage is done cooking, you'll have a bunch of like pockets of fat in the sausage, so it almost looks like a balloon, and you see all this like kind of like orangish like fat just pulling around uh, just from all the spices. I think cutting off that fat on this particular pork butt 
is important because we realize the marbling in here is pretty good. Uh, so we don't really need that extra excess fat. Yeah, there's already so much on there. Mm -hmm. So we're doing three pounds of pork, mm -hmm. one, uh, one pound of beef, and mm -hmm. I think that'd be a really, really, uh, really good ratio. Yeah, totally. All go. right, again, one pound of that beef chuck, three pounds of that pork butt, mm -hmm. and uh, that's gonna be our main meat here. All right. Right. Okay, spice time. Whoa. <laughs> Dried marjoram. Black pepe, mustard powder, granulated garlic, kosher salt, pink salt, and milk powder. All right, so we're pre-mixing these spices just so that they're a little more evenly incorporated into our sausage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't want to dump all those dry ingredients just straight onto the raw meat. We want to make sure it's incorporated all the way through. And of course, we are measuring all of these spices out by weight according to percentages of right. the meat, right. which will be on the website for you in the recipe. Um, yeah, it's all explained over there. We're not gonna get into like all these you know, crazy numbers and mathematics. Yeah. Because your boy can't read. Yeah. And we did all the hard work for you. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about, yeah. milk powder, what's good? All right, so milk powder is, is just one of those things that is gonna help bind that sausage together. That's what makes the sausage or the farce like extra sticky. That's farce. what it's gonna help it Fancy to. word for farce. mashed meat, right? Exactly, yeah, and like we want that to make it extra tacky. Tacky. Tack. It's gonna be a huge thing. That word of the day is gonna be tack. Yeah. Call us the tack boys. <laughs> We're getting tactical. That's right. So uh, let's yeah. mash some meats, bro. There you go, yeah. All right, so now that we have this, we just want to evenly incorporate everything together. Um, and you know, we just wanna make sure all these sides are kind of covered and seasoned, and we just wanna make sure that nothing is left in the bowl. Cool. Ooh, I forgot oh, about the water. Water, right, water, right, right. water, about water. we almost forgot, yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm just gonna give us about that much. Now, yeah. there are exact measurements on the website for the water, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, so the water that we have in there, you know, a lot of people say we want to add in water to add a little bit more liquid so it's juicier. Mm -hmm. But really, at least the way that I like to think about it, especially since we put the milk powder in there for extra binding agent, we just want to make sure that everything kind of becomes a little bit like of a sludge. Yeah. <laughs> and we, in that way, it's going to make sure that everything's incorporated all the way through and also that we don't leave any seasoning at the bottom of the bowl. Um, so as we mix it, you'll see the kind of like the milk powder kind of becoming like a seasoned milk. Milky um, meat sludge. Yeah, and then that's what's gonna really help incorporate everything together. Right on. It gets sticky, so yeah. Cool, pour a little on. Yeah, go for it. Tiny bit to start. Yep. Um, so whatever, you know, exact measurements we have on there, that's kind of like the maximum amount of water that you want to put in there. Uh, because, you know, as we're doing everything by percentages, if we add in too much water, you're gonna have watery sausage links and we don't want no excess bueno. water in there because then the same thing that we talked about earlier about having pooling liquid it won't be you know melted fat it will just be excess water mm -hmm. which we don't want and it's pretty good though nice and tacky the tack has only begun <laughs> <laughs> all right we got our tacky meat we got mm -hmm. a grinder set up here notice how this is ice cold to the touch right there. That's important. I mean, this is a, this is a half horsepower meat grinder. It's amazing. Yeah, oh, so, so nice. this is this is something that I'm not necessarily worried about it getting gummed up. No. But if you're using an attachment, like the uh, Like what I use every time I yeah. grind meat, it's yeah. brutal. We're only doing four pounds of sausage, mm -hmm. which isn't a small amount, but it's not like a huge amount. But let's say later on you plan on making a huge batch of sausage like and, a you're, party or something. Yeah, and you're you're using a small grinder and you don't keep it chilled, it will gum up just for the fact that it's just working so hard. Right. Well, she looking hungry, let's feed yeah, her. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Woo, hear that puppy purr. <laughs> That's Ooh. a good sound. We gotta take a little sound bite of that, and that's gonna be my text sound. <laughs> Whenever I get a text. Joe's texting. <laughs> yeah, I would say, you know, if you are trying to get into sausage making, invest in a grinder. It is so, so worth it. Or if you make your own burgers, you know. Listen, if you have a garage, and you love to cook, and you love to barbecue and grill and all that the good old stuff, it's gonna be worth it. Oh yeah. What does this thing run you, do you know? Uh, I think this was like $300. Alright, it's an investment, baby. It is, it is an you investment, I mean? but, you know, it'll save you so yeah. much time. Uh, okay. There you go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Mop up, baby. Oh, there you go. <laughs> good call, good call. Nice. There you go. There Tack. you go. Tack, baby. 
<laughs> All right, so this is obviously extremely coarse. We used a massive grinding yeah. whole yeah. slicer piece. So, you know, with this one, I think having a really nice coarse ground, it adds a lot to texture because mm -hmm. I mean, even though we don't, we don't want this to become like a hot no, dog no. or a bologna where it's super emulsified. Yeah. Um, so I like starting in the really large die and that way we can figure out, do we want to go through it another time or do you want to just leave it as is? Because if we left it as is, these fat pockets might render, especially if cooked too high, leaving those gaps, which is right, bad right. sausage. So we are going to run this through again before we right. smear it up and emulsify and it right. gyms uh, the uh, their Polish was, again, not quite hot dog, mm -hmm. a little more emulsified, definitely yeah. not this course. Definitely so we not. definitely need yeah, to run yeah, it through yeah, again. For sure. Mash your meat right into that mate hole there. Yeah, you can already see that it's starting to get, again, tacky again, and uh, that fat is starting to be a little bit more incorporated with the meat, um, even just from looking at what we have in the last grind and what we already have coming through. I mean, yeah, check it out. This is after one pass. This is two passes. So you can just see right there how much different that is. Back to work. All right. All right. Looking good? That's it. Uh, yeah. We're good. Sick. Perfect. So now we got a smear. We got a smear. We got a shmee. Yep. Yeah, so much more emulsified, dude. Mm -hmm. So the important thing at this point is, you know, this is kind of like our last step before we start stuffing the sausage. We still want to create more tackiness. So at this point, we're going to do that by hand. So we're like hand emulsifying. Right. So just to make it easier, I'm going to separate this into kind of smaller portions so it's easier to manage. And, you know, right now you might have seen like tests where people kind of flatten down their hands and if it kind of, it flops like that, it's not sticky it enough. It doesn't yet. got the tack. It doesn't have that tack. So, so you need to form tack. Yeah, so I kind of like think about it like kneading dough, yeah. pretty much. Uh, we want to kind of really, really work it as much as possible uh, so we can create that tackiness. But not too much, right? Not too what much. What happens if you do too much? Yeah, if we, especially with our hands being a lot warmer uh, than this meat, we don't want to smear or melt any of this fat uh, because if we do so, it's just going to make that sausage, again, we don't want any of that fat to start leaching out. Like greasy and, and yeah, 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 where we have those fat pockets or you know, when you bite into it, it's just melted fat. Because mm -hmm. uh, then the sausage will be dry, it'll be crumbly, the casings will be kind of wrinkly and it's just, it's not good for anybody. All right, let's see here. Yeah, that's what we're looking for where it's kind of hanging off, but there's enough protein extraction where it's holding together. So this portion right here, is good. So when you're doing larger portions of sausage, I would definitely, definitely recommend splitting it up and just doing it in small chunks at a time. That way you don't have certain parts that aren't mixed thoroughly because then it'll be crumbly in certain parts of the sausage, which is gonna be kind of weird. Yeah, no bueno. I'm gonna have to take a whack yeah, go for lead, it. baby. Should I divide this in half again? Sure. Yeah, this is why you'll see, you know, in big sausage productions, they have like tumblers where they get all this meat and it just we saw those mixes at it. Vienna beef we when we went all to right, the factory. That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, you don't want to be doing this all by hand when you I've yeah. done I've done 50 pound batches by I, hand. I've, I've done a 50 pound batch uh, by hand for a pop up. It was not Damn. <laughs> that's hardcore, dude. Tack. That's it. Test. Perfect. So the next thing that we want to do uh, just because we did work it with our hands and it's a lot warmer uh, we're going to stick it in the fridge for a little bit just to kind of solidify that fat that we were just working with for the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Cool. Just look at all of our hard work in one little pan. All right. Hell yeah. All right. 20 or so minutes has elapsed. Our meat is nice and coelled. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. Where did it stuff? And it looks like you brought your Nimbus 2001. <laughs> So, so, so this is the hopper? This is the hopper. So we're right. just gonna make sure that as we pack the sausage into this hopper that uh, we press it down. Uh, just because we don't want any air pockets in here. If any po air pockets end up in here, we'll end up in our sausage, which okay. we don't want. No boy. Yeah. Pack her in. Mm -hmm. You can see just how tacky it is. So dude, it's sticking to my glove and like pulling yeah. it off. All right. Got a nice hopper full of chilled meats. Yep. All right. in here, get it. All, set. All right, we want to uh, kind of keep this going until we see a little bit of sausage coming out of our stuffer right there. Oh, oh, yeah, Ooh, there we go. that's All nice. Right, cool. 
So that way we know once we put the casings on, once we tie off the end, that we won't have any excess air that's just yeah. gonna be in the pocket. And the other thing that we're gonna do as we set this up is we're going to put a little bit of water on this pan. Uh, and the reason for that is mm -hmm. sometimes it, as you start to stuff it all out, it'll kind of get clogged up and we don't want any of our casings to burst. Yeah, so basically lubrication happen. to avoid the bursting. Exactly, yeah. So these are hog casings. Hog There's casings. also sheep casings, which tend to be a little smaller. Mm -hmm. There's also cellulose casings, which actually, you know what, why don't we just show the good people? Oh. These are basically like, it, it's almost like they're plasticky, but it's not plastic and they're, they're smoke permeable. So mm -hmm. smoke can travel in and out. So you pop these on and then when they're done, you cut them down and your, your sauce is just molded with no skin. But a very important part about Polishes and hot dogs from Chicago is that snap. Yeah. You need you that snap and that can only be achieved with natural casing. Mm -hmm. All right. And so these come usually packed dried in salt, but we're just soaking these in water here to uh, kind of re-moisten them and to mm -hmm. get rid of a lot of that salt. Yep. And um, you showed me a really cool thing to do to test them out. Yeah, all right. Now when we find the opening on one end, just in case like we wanna make sure it's nice and clean, we're gonna just run it through that same water and just kind of get a couple of little Oh look, there's a there. hole right there. There's a hole. Oh, there is a hole. That's why we do this, baby. We're gonna leave this off to the side yeah, just because it's got that hole. I'm gonna try this there. one. Yeah, go I'm for gonna it. use your two finger technique here. Run it all the way down. Make sure there's no holes in your, no breaking points. Yep. And then okay, also if there's got any, the longest one. There you go. That's <laughs> what right. we're looking for. We okay. want the long one. That one's a beauty. That one's Perfect. ready for us. Move that right. Mm -hmm. This is basically, they tell you this in health class, right? <laughs> but we got a little hole. So we're gonna go around it and just like your eighth grade teacher tell you. Yeah. And also the water that we put through it helps lubricate the tube as well so it doesn't get stuck. The worst is like when your casing is a little bit dry and as it, like it'll stick the tube and it'll just shred as you try to push uh, the farce through as you're casing it. And it just gets really annoying. So you just wanna make sure again, lubricate the pan, lubricate every single part. Moisture is your friend in this process. Definitely. Yep. And then I'm gonna do a little balloon tie really quick mm -hmm. at the end here. Make that knot kind of as close to the base as you can. God, there are so many dick jokes, dude, I can't. <laughs> I'm trying my best here to refrain. Okay, sweet, so we're ready. So um, you wanna take the first crank? Sure. God, yeah. see? <laughs> Yeah. All right, just <laughs> right. go for it. All right, so with the this is probably the part that I feel like most people are a little scared of because uh, they're scared of like breaking mm -hmm. the casings and having to redo it. It just takes practice. Mm -hmm. So as it starts to fill up, I'm just kind of feeling for how tight the casing is using my pinky and my ring finger as it comes out. And I'm using my thumb and my uh, pointing finger as kind of like a gauge to control how much comes out. We just want to make sure that it's even stuffing all the way through the process. So this is kind of where we're at right now. And as we kind of stuffed it early in the beginning, this part feels a lot softer than it does here. So if that happens and you feel like it's uneven, uh, before you twist off a link, you can always just kind of move that sausage around and redistribute that farce inside that link right there. Or if you want to, you can just redo it. <laughs> yeah. You can come here and find the, yeah. your original link size and you can twist it. Or the way that we're gonna do it today is a little bit different. Based off of how Jim's does it, they split their yeah. links in half. So we wanna kind of create the length of two links with it, which I think we're there. Yeah, like totally. It looks right like, there, and remember, this is like the, you know, it's very similar to kielbasa. And when you get mm -hmm. a kielbasa, they're about this big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you were to take a standard size kielbasa, which I would imagine is about a foot, maybe a little more, maybe mm -hmm. a little less, cut that in half, that's your Polish. Right. Of course, a little different in terms of Polish versus kielbasa, but this is like right now kielbasa. Yeah. So as we do this, now that we found the size link that we want, this is where we're gonna twist it. And as we twist our links, we're gonna flip it forward, and then the next time we, we flip it, we're gonna have to flip it backwards, because if we don't, all of our sausage will become uh, unwound. unwound and we'll lose all of our... Uh, this is what always gets me with sausage making. I can never remember which way I went. People are like, look at yeah. the twist, and I'm like, dude, I don't know. I just can't, I can't think when I look at that. It like, confuses yeah. me. And again, just kind of keeping this pan lubricated again so that the sausage that we already made doesn't keep us from forcing it out. So we're gonna turn this so we can create some more space. Wonderful, wonderful form. Oh, and we're getting close to the edge of our casing. Oh, Hopefully yeah. we can get, think, Yeah. Here. Woo, there. just there, baby. Perfect. Okay, All so right. now we twist towards you. Well, at this point, because we don't have another link, uh -huh. you know, we can just tie this off like we oh, would. Oh, look, there's a hole. Uh, so we gotta bummer. pinch a little off. 
a little bit off. That's all right. See how easy it is to fix that correction, though, yeah. and to make that correction. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, these things, they're natural products. They're imperfect, but they're pretty strong, so. I don't know if this is a trademark, but I'm calling these uh, sausage nunchucks right here. That is a trademark, dude. <laughs> that's a trademark. All right, so that's what we're looking for. And then uh, this way, we can get, we know how many portions we have because we know that we can just split these two in half and we'll have yeah, four polishes. Totally. So we're gonna take the thingy again, pop it on. Another nice long case. Kind of satisfying. This is a Zen moment making sausage right here. <laughs> just a simple little knot. Boom, clap. This is exhilarating. I can go back to real life after this. So um, this is gonna be a big boy. Yeah, that's fine. Woo! All right. That's it? I think that's it. Heck yeah. Slide that off. So just tie that at the end. That's it. That's our that's link, man. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, give it a, give it a squeeze for me. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. All right, so we got our fresh sausage. That's done. However, for best results, you're gonna wanna let these sit on a rack overnight in the fridge to dry out a little bit. Why do we want that, Joe? Uh, so for when we're making sausage and we're smoking it, we really want to make sure it's dry as possible because in the smoking process, while it's still kind of wet, uh, we don't really want that. We want to expel as much moisture as possible so we get a nice taut casing. Yeah, that's nice and taut. Give that a nice poke. That tack, man. That tack. <laughs> Yeah, you can see how like even the structure of it, it's a lot tighter. It's, it's not as floppy as it was when we just made the fresh sausage. All right, cool. Should we get these in the smoker? Yeah, let's do it. It's cool. Little cold bread, what's that about? Yeah, so with, especially with this size smoker, like we don't want a huge, huge cold bed. Those coals will stay way too hot. Mm -hmm. And we're cooking our sausage at like 150 to 170 degrees, so it's nice and low. So if we just have too many coals, this thing is just gonna stay rocking. Even at like 200, 225. What do you mean by this hot. size smoker? It looks about average to me. It looks like it would suffice. It, I mean, it's a decent size smoker. It looks smoker. like it's normal, honestly. <laughs> well, I got my 250 gal in my backyard, so. Cool, uh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to flex, <laughs> man. Just lay it on the table. All right. Yeah, but with this one, the also the other thing that we want to do is like seeing all this smoke and like mm -hmm. technically it should be a little bit darker than when you're trying to get a really clean burning fire yeah. uh, because with sausage, we're cooking so low and we want to get as much smoke flavor on them as possible. So, so it's okay to have a little bit of a yeah, dirtier Yeah, fire. we want to have a little bit of dirtier fire in this one. And honestly, even if the fire gets a little bit too hot, mm -hmm. we might even close on the dampers on that firebox wow. too. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, like we don't really want to see flames in this. We just want to make sure the coals are hot enough to mm -hmm. when we add like wood chunks or mm -hmm. any flavored wood that we want to, that'll still combust and add more smoke flavor to the stack. But we don't really want to be burning like we're cooking like ribs, brisket and okay. like, stuff like that. And at this stage, when you guys are putting sausage on a smoker, however you lay out the sausage, that's how it's going to be in the final product. So, you know, as we're trying to replicate a Jim's Polish, we don't want to keep the sausage coiled up like this. Because if we do, it's going to be really hard to fit in the buns that we're making. It's so, nice and straight. Nice straight and straight. Sausage. There you go. So we're going to take this and we're just going to perfect size. We're going to lay it out and kind of stretch it out as much as we can to keep it as straight as possible. And then we'll spread that out there. It's a big old one right there. All right, so we got our double probes going. Yep. Our front, our number one, is going to be the uh, internal, and that's going to be our sausage. Cool. We'll monitor the temp of the pit is the most important thing, but we want to make sure that temp is at 150 to 270 ish or so. Okay. Uh, the reason why we want to keep it that low is all that fat that we have mixed into the sausage. If you get to like 180, 190, that's when you get all those sausages that are kind of really wrinkly because mm. all that fat starts to cook out of it. Oh, so it uh, shrinks down. Yeah, and then you get all those pockets and all the casing gets wrinkly. So to avoid that, we're gonna, we're gonna cook it for a little bit longer at a lower temp. Got you. And we can only do that because we added that uh, curing salt into there. Mm, that pink prog, baby. All there right, wood-wise, what are we doing here? Should we throw some wood on now? Do we need to yeah, wait? let's do it on now. So we got a little bit of hickory dickory dock here. Perfect. Since we're keeping it low, I don't want a lot of this, right? So maybe just to start like that. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, put that right on top of our cutesy little bed. Yeah. Again, this is not a time when you want to be afraid of a bunch of smoke coming out of your smokestack. Yeah. This is the one thing where you want to get as much of it on there as possible. Uh, and again, we just want to make sure the fire doesn't get too hot. And if it does, we'll close down the dampers if we need to. Or if necessary, we'll pull out some coals. But cool. Yeah. All right, man. Good. Right on. Sweet. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half. Let's mm -hmm. check on these pups. Yeah. Woo! 
Oh yeah. Those are pretty. They like, they got great color. Yeah. And outside it's like, I mean, you can what? see how it's just fucking oh, man right it. There. Like wow. that is what we're looking for. Wow. Incredible. And you can see like how there's got, it's still all that fat right. that we had kind of ground up in there. Mm -hmm. It's not melted. Like there's right. not pockets of fat all the way in there. So even though we ground it up twice, mm -hmm. the fat is still semi coarse in there. So we'll give it nice texture without it, you like biting into a chunk of fat. Amazing, you know? man. Firmness is what you're looking for. And that's the reason why we chill it overnight to allow that outside to get that, ex it kind of has like a- It's almost plasticky, but yes, obviously it's yes. not. Yeah. Kind of like the, the silicone like right. wrapping would be on the sausage, but it's natural casing. 100%. Um, yeah. Cool, let's take right. this up. Okay, so a couple of the things that uh, advanced or experienced sausage makers might be asking, mm -hmm. maybe why didn't we poke holes in these? Yeah, so you know, I, I think a lot of people poke holes in it because while they're casing it, we're talking about those air pockets yeah. and any type of air pocket that's in the sausage you don't want. But that's why we made sure that we packed the, the hopper like super tight so there wasn't any air pockets. And also while we were stuffing it, we made sure that it was really, really compact in there so there weren't any air gaps. Because right. uh, if we did, all these kind of uh, holes that we poke in there, uh, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes if you cook a little bit too hot, it just forces all that extra like fat. Yeah, we want it all out. encased in there. Yeah. We don't want to leach any flavor, Definitely. right? Another thing, the ice bath. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so the ice bath, usually when you know you get to this stage, people just drop it in ice water. And mm -hmm. it's really what it's doing uh, is just shocking the sausage. Stop so the Exactly, because even though we cooked this super low temp, like it's still gonna cook as it's sitting out here. Uh, and because of the size of these links, yeah. um, they're a little bit too big to put in an ice bath. So we're just gonna very easily just throw in the fridge for a little bit and let them cool down. Cool, and that's totally fine too. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. but we don't wanna do that straight out the smoker, right? We need to let them stop them from steaming or yeah. we'll something about that. Yeah, but... because you know, as soon as you put it in and it's in like your, your fridge, which is like a cabinet, yeah. you don't want all the excess steam from these links to kind of linger in there. We wanna get a lot of the humidity out so that it doesn't sog up the casing again. Yeah, because you went through all that trouble of drying it out exactly. and smoke now. We don't want moisture. Yep. Moisture is the enemy of sausage, it sounds exactly. like. Exactly. All right, cool, in the fridge. There you go. From here, what do we do? So we had this uh, sausage cooling in the fridge, so. <laughs> <laughs> Got caught there. All right, so we had this uh, sausage uh, cooling the fridge because we wanted to completely cool it down. Uh, and now we're at a point where it's ready to reheat. So for our purposes, we're going to kind of just put them in the oven at like 300 or so, just until so everything's really nice and taut like it was when we pulled off the smoker. Yeah. Uh, that way it'll kind of redistribute its juices, it'll be nice and even, and it'll make that casing ni nice and snappy. Cool, we're going for snap here. We want All optimal snap. snap. Exactly. Cool. All right, in the oven. Three hundo, yeah. about 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 to 15 or so. Oh yeah. That's nice and taut. Yep. Thing just got out of the gym. It's, it's, it's pumped up. I know. Love it. It gyms. Actually, you know, we got some gym sausages right here. Mm -hmm. These all look like end pieces though, which is hilarious. But I mean, I guess they're both always end pieces, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the thing about a Polish sausage is that like, you know, it's either rounded off at one side and cut on the other or cut on both sides. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do this? Just because we have, we want to recreate the same si uh, kind of look. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool to have one cut side of yeah. one side that's kind of like the twist. I kind of like it on the bias too. Yeah. Looks nicer. You want to go on a bias like that, you're saying? Or like, just kind of like, yeah, like instead of cutting it like straight up, like maybe like a tiny yeah. bias. You want me to do it? Yeah, do it, man. Go for it. Oh, I'm nervous though. All right, where are, we cutting it? where are we cutting it? I would say, right here? Yeah, right there's good. This is a nice spot. Yeah, hopefully we get a good snap on there. All right, ready? Oh, yeah. Oh man, that's a nice color. Yeah. And you can oh, see like, it immediately uh, smells. Like delicious. the coarseness of it is different yeah. than. A little comparison here. Cut it so it's mm -hmm. nice and fresh. So, Jim's, ours. You could see, obviously, there's a lot of obvious differences. Mm -hmm. What are you saying about the coarseness? Yeah, it's the coarseness because the, their grind is a lot smoother. A lot more texture. Obviously, our, the, the color from our smoke is a lot more intense and mm -hmm. almost red. Um, obviously, our casing is a little bigger. That could be, if you were trying to go for a more original gyms, you can just get a smaller casing, but you know, I like the hardiness of yeah. ours. I think it's great. And then just the coarseness of our pepper that we use compared to theirs. Yeah, like theirs is like a chicken. really, really fine pepper specs. All right, snap test. Snap test. This is to test a sausage. This yeah. is a good, a good litmus. 
All right, so we have our beautiful guy here. Let's see what this sounds like. That's it. That's what we're looking for. Damn, boy. Yes, that sir. Is, that is dang nice. Give that a smell. Yep. Dude. That garlic, the that's margarine good. that we put in there, the smoke, like, it's got it all. But the color is really the thing that's yeah. popping, though. <laughs> the color is, makes it so, like, appetizing. Yeah. We're gonna try to do this like they do at gyms here. We got ourselves a nice little plancha here. We got the onions rolling in the back, nice and caramelized. They hit their sausages mm -hmm. on the grill, right? Yep. So we have ours, big and beefy and red, and Jim's, a little skinnier, a little oranger. Still fantastic. Just gonna warm those through, give them some nice little color. Yeah, the other thing that they do too is because they're making so many at one time and they wanna keep them warm mm -hmm. is once they're done, <laughs> They yeah. bury them in those so onions. I think it's a great idea. It's awesome. So what else yeah. do we got that goes into Polish where these are cooking? We got the plain old Classic. yellow mustard spread with a spatula. Yep. That's most important. Gotta do it with a spatch. And our pickled serrano peppers. Very important. Yes. Yeah. This is kind of one of those cool things where it's like, you know, Jim is Greek. He's making a Polish sausage. And there's that Hispanic heritage yeah. too here with the pickled serranos. Nice super and cool. spicy, you know, yeah. crunchy, acidic, good. These are super easy to make. You're just gonna, you know, pickle. Any pickling recipe that you can find. Literally, and just do that same like thing sugar, vinegar, salt, water, boom. Let them sit for like a week in your fridge, you're good. And then the hot dog bun of Chicago is always gonna be your S. Rosen, right? Shout out S. Rosen here. It even, look at that. Literally, Chicago hot dog, same hot dog bun. There you go. The, the bread. <laughs> The branding's on the bag, baby. So, I actually went ahead and uh, developed uh, my own recipe for a similar hot dog bun here. As you can see, we got a couple different kinds. Mine's a little heftier, a little bigger here. But we got the classic poppy seed at Jim's. Mm -hmm. They don't do the poppy seed buns, right? Yeah. They have the plain bun, which we have right here. Same thing, just that one has poppy seeds on it. I just so happen to really, really like poppy seed hot dog buns, even on a Polish. Me too. So I'll probably be eating those, but you know, plain Jane is also fine too. And it's the same thing as like the traditional Chicago hot dog right. that everyone knows and loves is a poppy seed bun. 100%, yeah. 100%. But again, you can totally use a plain bun. Um, if you want the recipe for this, it's gonna be over on Patreon. Uh, you know, go grab yourself some nice hot dog buns that'll totally do the mm -hmm. trick too. But if you wanna go above and beyond, I got that for you over there. All right, once we get nice color on the bottoms like that, that's what we're looking for. And so we're just gonna flip these. Beautiful glossy color. Oh yeah, look Ooh, at that, that one. one I, see, I like that though. I like a little charm. Yep, gotta get it. You're also just building more texture, right? The onions are soft, the bun is steamed. Other than like the serranos, like this is where you're getting all that texture yeah. from in there. So uh, getting that nice kind of good sear on the side is really important. Just to keep these onions and that sausage warm. <laughs> and look at that. All right, man, I think we're ready to go. Yeah, let's let's do it. build. Here, how about you do the Jim's OG, I'll do ours. Cool. S. Rose and plain bun, and then we got our little swipe of mustard. Or big swipe, crumbs. or big swipe. And then, we're gonna scrape off the onions for now, dig out the clean weenie, <laughs> and then as much caramelized onion as you want, but. Yeah, it's interesting sure it's when we were there too, they were like, hey, do you like your caramelized onions like super caramely? Do you like them yeah, kind of white? Yeah. All right, so that's what we got right there. Pretty. And then, are we using the paper, or are we just gonna drop Oh, the... dude, we gotta use the paper. Right. What are you saying? Of course. There we go. They yeah. use wax paper, we got parchment. We got the sauces right there. Yeah. Gotta Serrano. go two peps, gotta go two going, peps. All right, we're going two. <laughs> he wants to die today. Yeah, baby. You got two. Put that on the inside. Then, boom, sides, and roll it up. And that'll kind of steam in there too, yep. which is real nice. You can mm -hmm. see it, that's the, the sign of a good Polish exactly. right there. Exactly. Got like the, the pepper is yeah. Kind of sort of separate from the <laughs> from the sausage. And All right, it. heck yeah, this is the gym, baby. The Jimbos. Should we do ours? Yeah, man, do it. I think I'm going for that poppy seed. Go for it. I think I'm going for that poppy. Look at that bunjo. Ow. Ooh, that's ow. steamy. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> oh, but that is a pretty looking bun right there. Dang, look at those air pockets. Yeah, baby. Got a little swipe of that stirred. Just all edge to edge on mine. Gotta take, as Joe would say, the clean weenie. Ooh, look at that char in there. Yeah, that looks nice, dude. That looks nice. And we like caramelized onions, right, Joe? Oh yeah. We're gonna we're gonna load those up. And it's a bigger link, so we might have to yeah. put more onions on there yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, it only makes sense, right? Weenie down on the diagonal. 
You know what? Just because it's a bigger wiener, dude. I was just about I'm to say. I'm going three, yeah. baby. <laughs> oh god. We're, We're gonna die. We're dead. <laughs> These things are All spicy. Right. Close it up. Wax paper is barely big enough. That's ours. That looks beautiful. Looks great. Size difference? Yeah, that's pretty similar. Maybe a little, maybe a little bigger. <laughs> a little heftier, but we're burly boys. Yeah, man. Cut like an Italian sandwich. <laughs> and the gems. Give you your sides. Which one are we going first here? Let's try OG. the original. OG. Let's try the original to give us yeah. a baseline here. Never had this before. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers. Mm. Hot diggity dang dang. You still mm. get that multiple snaps from that taste. Multiple snaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a we'll firecracker. Yeah, you gotta pop, you gotta do a little bit, right? It's ruin our day. Spicy. You live on the edge, my man. Took a fat bite. Took a fat bite. <laughs> oh, that one's a bad one. Uh-huh. <laughs> I told him. I told him. It wasn't as bad yesterday. <laughs> oh. I'm not helping. I sold them. <laughs> yeah. When you pickle them, man, they get they get hot. Mm. Amateur. Mm. Amateur. I'm gonna take a lap around the block. Oh man, I almost forgot. Oh shoot. That'll do. You need to so bad right now. <laughs> mm, gosh, the gods of Milwaukee that have works. quenched me. Okay. Delicious. Yeah, nice. Minus that whole thing that just happened to me. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna eat this round in the next one. This I don't think I'm gonna either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might wait on that. Okay. I'm gonna eat 10. <laughs> in that hurricane of pain, I remembered that we had fries. Three from Jim's. Actually, from Jim's. Look at that crunch yeah, stuff. So good. All right, man. Yeah, uh, just let you know. Avoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do my best. Wait, hold on. Oops. Oh, no. Oh, ho, ho. the hidden stem, <laughs> dude. Get out of town. All right. All right, man. You, hey, you Another made cheers? this Polish, man. Dude, we made cheers. this Polish, man. Let's go. <laughs> that is dang to stay. That bun is, uh, it's really good. Dude, that bun to sausage combo. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Dude, look how like the beautiful greenery in there too from the marjoram. Yeah. It's like hydrated in there and it's like super bright. That's cool. Dude, the poppy seed though. Mm -hmm. Come on. I love the poppy seed. Poppy seeds is. Are you going I in want for all the time. Are you going in oh, for Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Man, they're both really great. Flavor profile was pretty similar. Yeah. Kind of shockingly similar because they don't look similar. That they don't look that similar, I should say. And the smell is not similar. Either. No. But the taste, especially with everything else on it, I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfectly rich. Like you know, the cool thing about Jim's, what he was saying, not too oily, doesn't linger on the back here. Yeah, he was talking about much. all that kind of stuff, like breaking down like people taste wine, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. He's like a sausage kind of sewer, obviously, yeah. literally. And he, he was, you know, he was joking, but he's also not joking. He literally comes in for quality control. I mean, that man knows sausage. Yeah. And um, I could proudly say for ours, I'm kind of feeling the same clean, snappy bite. Yeah. Tons of flavor from that garlic and all the margarine, lots of smoke. But because you're not just eating that smoked thing, you've got this bread and of course the spicy um, serranos and all the mm -hmm. other stuff. It still kind of tastes to me like, I don't know, it's got that like city feel to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not quite just like this honking smoke thing For that sure. you're eating with like barbecue sauce and stuff. It's like, it's a sandwich, yeah. like you said. And yeah. it, it's uh, also this style and especially the color reminds me a little bit of like a like a summer sausage. It kind of warmed totally. up, you know, because it's a little yeah. bit bigger. It's a lot. It's a little bit more coarse. Um, yeah. If if there's yeah. any like non Midwestern people who don't know what a summer sausage is, we'll put, we'll put a picture right there. Actually, can we put a picture? Let's put a picture of a summer sausage right, right here. Yo, a lot of work goes into this. This is obviously a, a thing of love. It's a craft. Like, you can go to the grocery store. You can buy a pack of sausages for like Definitely. four dollars. Are they gonna taste as good? Definitely not. Yeah. But also like, it really makes you like understand like the, the miracle of technology, mm -hmm. like how they just streamline these processes to the point where they can make the cost so low. Yeah. But you know, before that, especially in like Germany and like when they were making their own sausages, like it's just so much goes into it. They didn't have like processors back then. I was gonna then. say, they, I mean, you see all those old school hand crank grinders where it's like just tied to the edge of the table when you're doing it by hand. That's insane to me. A lot you know? of love goes into that, yeah. man. So next time you see a sausage, you go to Jim's and it's cheap, be thankful. Yeah. Because this ain't Absolutely. easy. <laughs> Thanks again, man. This was Cheers. great. Wouldn't need a Polish with anyone else. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. See you next time. 
I hope you enjoyed this tubular journey of ours today. If you wanna try an OG Polish sausage, you gotta head over to Jim's. Whenever you're in town, go check them out, they rock. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hat tip to you if you subscribe. Also, best way to uh, kind of support what we're doing here is over on Patreon. For literally five bones a month, you can have access to special you can have access to special giveaways, exclusive recipes, and so much more. Also, come say what up on the Discord, regardless of if you're, you know, doing the Patreon thing or not. Everybody's welcome. Come hang. You gotta go check Joe out. He's the man. I'm gonna leave his socials below. He's a god when it comes to his Zen meats, so give him a peep, and I shall see you next time. Toodles.